Hi, hey everyone. Welcome. We're going to give it a couple minutes and let everyone join before we get started. Can you see the Zoom bar when I when I'm sharing my screen and I go over it, Christy? Um, right now I can't see it. Okay. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining. We're gonna give it another couple minutes and then we'll get started. Maybe uh, while we're waiting to get started, for those of you who've already joined, uh, maybe you could just type in the chat where you're zooming in from. What, uh, what city you're zooming in from, I should say. Mendicino. Tempe Old Town, Wenatchee, Washington, Beijing, Ooh, Malta. Malta, mm. that's, a, that's a new one. Yeah. Phoenix, Omaha, South Brazil, wow. Vegas, San Fran, Tamil Nadu, Dubai, Kazan, Delhi, oh, Florida, wow. Atlanta, Great, all over. Wow, I love it. Andabad, Maryland, Toronto. Wow. Really great. Very spread out. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Yes, welcome. Did everyone enjoy their program session? Hopefully it was informative. Shenyang. Got one yes with the smiley face. Hopefully, good. <laughs> good. the overarching theme. Yeah, it was great. Good, good. Perfect, good. good. Wonderful. Well, should we go ahead and get started? You think? It looks like we're slowing down on the joining. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, everyone, thank you again for joining us today for our open house. Um, like we said, we hope that you enjoyed your breakout session uh, prior to this. You got a lot of questions answered by your program heads, but we're going to go over some kind of more general information, next steps, resources. Um, so as we go through this, if you have any questions, please feel free to write your questions in the Q&A box. And then at the end, we'll have a time and we'll go through all of those. Um, so we'll go ahead and move into some introductions. So on the webinar today, we've got Phil Horton, who's our interim school director. Phil, if you want to give a little wave, say hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Great. And then we've got Corey Cisco, our graduate coordinator senior. Corey, you want to say hi, everyone. And then I'm Christy Brown. I'm a graduate coordinator. You have worked with Corey and I, I'm sure, through the admissions process. And we are also your advisors who will be helping you throughout the program. So we are your great uh, kind of one-stop shop. If you have questions, come to us first, and we will help you out. Slide. And then Phil, you want to do oh, and Phil, time. yes, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Phil, go ahead and uh, if you want to do a little introduction, welcome everyone. Yes, uh, uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, as was mentioned, I have been serving as the interim director of the design school uh, this year. And it is uh, really my honor to get to welcome you all and to say that we're incredibly excited to have you join us in Tempe this fall. Uh, to start your graduate studies in the design school. Um, there's a couple of things that I'll just uh, say. It's, it's been a really interesting year, obviously for everyone. We've, we've all had a, a kind of year that I don't think anyone would have expected uh, just a year ago. Uh, but there's a lot to be excited about in a moment like this. Uh, earlier this uh, semester, just a, a few weeks ago, uh, our university provost announced the plan to uh, really be back in a, in a healthy and robust way to in-person teaching this fall for everyone who can be in person and who wants to be in person. Uh, for anyone who has concerns about either your ability to be here in person at the beginning of the semester 
uh, or the safety of being in person for uh, a certain period of time, we're happy to accommodate you. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we've been teaching across multiple modalities uh, this semester and have really learned to, uh, in an amazing way, uh, provide the same high quality education and learning outcomes regardless of, of where students are. Um, from a, a safety standpoint, being at ASU has been uh, really, it's, it's, it's been an exciting place to be for 15 years, but uh, the last year has been really incredible. Um, so the state of Arizona has had a number of vaccination sites uh, throughout the Phoenix metropolitan area. And ASU has been leading the, the largest state run vaccination sites. Uh, our um, biodesign group has been leading a lot of uh, research uh, testing has been available in a, in a really incredibly accessible way throughout the course of the semester. Uh, and so when the provost says that, you know, we're ready to be back to fully in person, there's a, an incredible amount of data and confidence behind that. And uh, certainly we're very excited to uh, have uh, students back in a, in a big way this fall or, or starting to plan uh, some really big plans for our fall welcome. Uh, I want to also just say that um, uh, for anyone who might be uh, unfamiliar with ASU, we have multiple campuses, which I'm sure many of you have seen. Uh, we're here on the Tempe campus in the northwest corner of the campus, kind of on the threshold uh, between ASU and downtown Tempe, uh, which uh, is starting to really team with life again, especially as we're now in the moment where uh, a number of tours for um, incoming students are being given on campus. It's great to see all of that activity. Uh, for anyone who's, who's not familiar, uh, Phoenix is the fifth largest and one of the fast growing, fastest growing uh, cities in the country. And in spite of the pandemic, there have been a lot of new businesses moving to the area, a lot of new um, uh, high-tech manufacturing moving to the area, a lot of new developments uh, in Phoenix. So in, in spite of a lot of the challenges and concerns around uh, COVID, the uh, economic projections for our city look really great. And so having a great class of incoming graduate students is gonna be important to be able to help uh, add talent to the, the community going forward. So I'll, I'll keep it there because uh, Corey and Christy have a, a really great and, and very um, detailed presentation for you that's gonna share a lot more information than that. But I just wanna reiterate that uh, it's my honor to be able to kind of welcome you all. And I just wanna say that I'm incredibly excited to meet you uh, here in Tempe this fall. So thank you for joining us this morning and this evening for those of you who are uh, in other time zones. Thank you, Phil. So as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, we um, are ranked the number one in the US for innovation. So it says 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. Well, also 2020, we were designated number one in innovation. And that means a lot of different things. Um, so ASU is a research university, which means that um, we pride ourselves on the research that we do. And with research brings innovation in a lot of different ways. Um, so we've doubled our research money in the past 10 years. We've um, emphasized youth inspired research. There is an entrepreneurial spirit. Um, not only do we just have that in our programs, but there are also programs designated for innovation and entrepreneurship on campus. So that is something that we're very proud of and getting plugged into as that becomes more of a theme at ASU. Um, we have a bunch of different faculty um, and uh, students from a very diverse student population as well. Um, we have an incredible amount of undergraduate and graduate programs and also certificates. Um, and the main point is, is that if you want to pursue something here, we have it. Um, and that is something that we are um, doing and establishing partnerships with other you know, uh, schools within ASU as well. And um, there's a bunch of money and prototyping equipment and ideation spaces. And we'll go over our facilities too that we have specifically at the design school. And then we're also top 10 in the USA for graduate employability that we're very proud of. So when you come to uh, Tempe campus, um, you're not just dropped in the middle of the desert with not much to do. There's a lot of things going on um, in the Southwest. We are a short flight away from some of the major uh, West Coast cities like San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Las Vegas. 
Um, we're also a, a short drive away from the Grand Canyon National Park, which is absolutely majestic. And you drive through Flagstaff on the way up there, um, which is a, a great place if you are into skiing and snow in the wintertime, they get lots of it. Um, so there's a lot to explore in the Southwest when you are uh, studying here. And then as Phil mentioned, there are multiple campuses that make up um, ASU. So our most of our facilities for the design school are located on the Tempe campus, um, but we do have some space in the downtown Phoenix campus and there are resources um, across all of these that are available to you. Um, there's also, like he said, this is a, a thriving metropolis. There's lots going on. There's a lot of um, new build. There's lots of design studios, architecture firms, lots of opportunities for internships and uh, future jobs. Um, so it's, it's an exciting place to be studying because there's just so much, um, so many resources, so many things to explore and, and take um, advantage of. So one of the big questions that we're addressing here is why ASU? And um, like I mentioned, there um, is an incredible, incredibly diverse student population that we have, not only at the design school, but ASU at large. And um, the international student population is something near and dear to us since we work with a lot of you one-on-one. Um, -on -one. So we're very passionate about it. Um, but not only um, international students, but domestic students as well. A lot of our programs, which we'll go into a little bit more, um, actually, um, invite students from all different backgrounds to actually come and study at the school. So we're really proud of how um, all the students from different backgrounds actually come and study design. And that's something that is really exciting to us. Um, a few headlines here that um, ASU has um, made um, top number one uh, of the world's most prestigious universities. We're top in research, we're top in employability, um, top in international student choice. So um, a lot of great things happening here that we're very proud of and we're eager to continue on um, establishing as ASU continues to grow. Um, so, so the design school specifically, we are one of the most largest and most comprehensive design schools in the United States. And that's something that we do not take for granted. We have all the design disciplines housed within our school. Um, we'll go into all of our programs on the next slide. But with that comprehensive um, design disciplines that we have, we also partner with other units um, at ASU in order to um, enhance your educational experience as well. So whether that's a partnership um, in a studio on a project or whether you wanna do a concurrent degree, um, we provide those opportunities and we certainly support any student that goes out and finds something that they would like to pursue. That's why Christy and I are here in order to help uh, manage your plan of study. And if you wanna take a course outside of the design school or even a concurrent degree outside of us, you certainly are supported and we will try our best to make that happen for you. Yeah, so um, as Corey said, we've got lots of different programs here at the design school. These are all of them listed. So we've got studio based programs. Um, you can see which ones are designated um, as STEM. So there's a Master of Architecture, Master of Industrial Design, the Master of Interior Architecture, the Master of Landscape Architecture, the Master of Science and Innovation and Venture Development, our newest program, um, a, the Master of Visual Communication Design, and the Master of Urban Design program. And then we also have design research programs, um, the Master of Science in Design that has concentrations currently in industrial design, interior design, and visual communication design. And then we have our PhD in design environment and the arts. So like Corey said, um, we support concurrent degrees, we support cross-disciplinary studies. So regardless of what you got accepted into, um, there's all of this here that's being taught that's available for you to, to learn um, at the school. And then one thing, Christy, about STEM is STEM is important for international students if they would actually like to extend their OBT time here. So that's something that Christy and I can support you in, but also for students that are veterans, that means um, some great things in terms of financial um, funding ability. So just wanted to make that note real quick. So your program start dates, very important. So if you are in one of our summer start programs, um, the Master of Interior Architecture 3 Plus will begin on Monday, May 17th. The Master of Industrial Design 3 Plus and the Master of Visual Communication Design 3 Plus will begin on Tuesday, June 1st. Um, all of our other programs have fall start dates. So those will begin on Thursday, August 19th. So mark your calendars. <laughs> So uh, Phil touched upon this a little bit um, when he, in his introduction, but for the modality, meaning um, kind of the 
how they'll be taught in the fall and summer semester. So um, the provost did make an announcement that fall semester will be in person. However, um, summer, there will be mostly remote learning with some in-person in components if you are able to make it and would like to come. That does depend on um, faculty and who will be teaching that. So that will be something coming directly from the program. Hopefully you got a little bit more information about that in your program session if you are a summer um, student. But then for the fall, um, if you are an international student, I know that there is a lot of complications with the visa process right now and getting an appointment and all your documents in order. Um, just please keep us um, in the loop in terms of what you think is going to be possible for you. We can discuss options as well as for domestic students. Um, I know making a big move maybe across country is something that is a little bit intimidating right now during COVID. So please let us know um, how you're feeling, what exactly you're planning, so we can try and help you um, be best um, prepared for the fall semester. Um, we learned a lot last year in terms of um, ASU sync. So that was um, what is going to be moving forward as hybrid learning. So in person, then also remote options to log into classes. We imagine that will just be a part of ASU's future, but um, ASU will be um, having in person learning as the major modality for that fall semester. But keep us updated on what exactly um, you're anticipating, and we'll try our best in order to make sure that you are um, properly prepared and we can just assist in any way. And now we're going to go into our facilities. So we are located on the Tempe campus. We um, are on um, the University um, and Mill Avenue, which is a really great corner of campus. Mill is where a bunch of restaurants and different um, cool shops are. And then University is just the main street that goes through campus. So um, we have the College of Design North and South building. So we'll go into a little bit more of that in terms of what that means. So I did just pop in the chat before I move into this, um, the link to our virtual tour. So um, you can uh, hit that website and kind of tour around all of the different spaces that we're gonna be talking about. Um, so we have the prototype and modeling shop. Um, this is, it's staffed by an amazing group of, um, of people who are there to help you work through your projects, use the equipment, um, kind of figure out your designs and your prototypes. Um, this has uh, things like a CNC machine, there's a water jet machine, there's all kinds of hand tools, uh, there's a welding studio, so really everything that you need um, to work on your projects is available in the shop. Um, and they do have uh, specific hours, so um, again on the facilities page you'll find a lot of all of that information. There's also the digital lab that has all of the other equipment that you might need. So things like laser cutters and uh, 3D printers and big large scale scanners. Um, you can find these in the digital lab. They also have hours. You check out the equipment um, for a specific amount of time to work on your projects. Um, and there's also staff there to help you um, use the equipment. We also are lucky enough to have one of the library branches at ASU directly in our building. So it's the Design and Arts Library. The main Hayden Library at ASU just got a revamp. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and it's um, they've expanded. So there's a lot of different areas for students to meet, uh, meeting rooms, just um, kind of general spaces. Um, but the Design Library is specifically in our Design North building. There's over 50,000 materials um, unique to design and art students. So any sort of research endeavor, I highly suggest connecting with the design uh, library staff. They're really, really great. Um, and there's a bunch of different models that span um, from back to the 70s, which are just really interesting to look at. So um, that is at your disposal here at the school as well. We also have a computer and print lab. So that is on the second floor of our Design North building. There are computers for you to use there, printers. Um, the print lab specifically is run by some of our uh, management interns and student workers that will print um, anything that you need in terms of large scale posters. There's printers there for you to actually print just papers and whatnot. So that is also available to you as well. 
So important, next steps. Um, so your acceptance form that you received a link to in the email that contained your department offer letter, um, that's due by April 15th. And that helps us know who's coming, who's planning. That also will uh, prompt us to send you an email about registration. Um, you will also wanna continue to monitor your MyASU. Uh, there's two very common holds that you should expect to see. Um, the uh, proof of MMR immunization, you'll need to submit those records. Um, and if you're an international student, um, all of the documents, the financial guarantee form, the bank statements, all of that um, to help you get your I-20 will also be um, a, a hold. So um, you won't be able to register for classes until these are um, resolved. Um, but if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to us and we're happy to help. Um, you'll also need to send a final transcript showing your awarded degree. So many of you applied with an unofficial copy of your transcripts, or you might have been finishing your bachelor's degree this spring. So you will have to send that um, final official transcript um, within that first semester. So um, once you send your acceptance form, that's when we'll send you the registration information, which cor courses you need to um, you know, get signed up for. Um, and you'll register for your classes through your MyASU. And by do you do this by clicking the registration tab under um, My Classes. And just something to note, we do hold seats in all of your required courses. So if you do have some of those holds, the MMR immunization, the I-20, um, there's not a huge rush to get the to get signed up for classes right away when registration opens um, or you know once you submit your acceptance form um, you can get those resolved we will hold seats in those classes so that don't don't panic <laughs> so a big topic when uh, planning for coming to graduate school is financial aid or funding assistance so um, the design school specifically has some scholarships that we can offer um, and then TA positions, so teaching assistantships. So teaching assistantships are highly sought after because they come with a tuition award and then a stipend check. So um, some of you may have received an offer letter with a TA um, offer in there specifically. However, um, don't, just, just don't get discouraged if that wasn't included. Um, there is an application that we invite everyone to apply to. We try our best to make sure that um, people who want to be a TA do get the opportunity to be a TA. So that is something that we um, believe is very important in order to give you that experience if you want it. And then um, we have a uh, financial aid at ASU that domestic students are eligible for um, applying. And then the ASU Graduate College does have some scholarships and fellowships. So what the Graduate College really is, is it's the larger umbrella over all of the graduate programs at ASU. There are policies in place that Christy and I are really familiar with to just help you along in terms of making sure that you're in compliance and that you know exactly what you need to do. Um, but with these scholarships and fellowships, um, current students get a lot of these opportunities. So a lot of the things that I'm discussing here are available to current students for the most part. Um, our design school scholarships um, every year as a current student, they open in October and close in January. So you'll need to get used to what that timeline is. And then also with the scholarships at the graduate college, in addition to the fellowships, there are certain cycles that we, um, Christine, are aware of, and we'll send emails out to students if you are interested in any of these opportunities. Most, most of the fellowships, you need a department nomination, which is where Christy and I come into play, um, and we can nominate you um, on your behalf just to make sure that you are getting um, into any opportunity that you would like to pursue. And then there is also the Graduate Professional Student Association. This is a really great organization on campus. So they um, have funding specifically for graduate students. Um, so if you are trying to go to a conference, present a paper, um, if you're trying to get interviews or traveling for any of those reasons, um, they have money that you can apply for in order to use. As a graduate student, I was a reviewer for GPSA, um, and I also utilized some of their funds too in order to just help me along the way. Um, so definitely something I recommend to take advantage of. Not enough people utilize those funds. So we always try and push this for students um, if you're in that kind of situation. 
And then other important information. So you will need an ASU Sun card when you get here. We're all on the Isaac system, which is that um, you place your Sun card on a door and it'll open it for you. So that is something that's important. Um, in our orientations, we'll go over specifics about where to get that and whatnot. But just know that an ASU Sun card is going to be required for you to have. Um, there's also ASU Health Services. Um, so you can go in and get looked at by a doctor or a nurse practitioner if you need any assistance while you're on campus. We have an International Student Service Center that will help you um, with any sort of visa things. If you are trying to use CPT, um, apply for OPT, they're there at your disposal. They are the experts and uh, Christy and I work with them in order to make sure that everyone is on the right track. There's also ASU graduate admissions. Some of you might have already been in contact with them during the application process, but for the most part, Christy and I can mostly assist you in anything that you might need um, when it comes to that. And then, like I mentioned, the ASU Graduate College. So health insurance is available through ASU. Um, there's a mandatory student health insurance that's automatically charged for international students. Um, and pre-approved sponsored students are automatically waived upon receipt of the financial guarantee form at the ASU Finance Office. And the link at the bottom here, and I will paste this in the chat as well, will show you all of the different options for health insurance um, that are available to you. And there's also uh, contact information there that they can give you more detailed information about the various options. So the Western Regional Graduate Program, this is um, for students who live in any of the gold states that you see in this image, um, you are eligible for 150% of in-state tuition. So this is a, a drop from the out-of-state um, uh, tuition rate. Um, so you have to prove that you've been living in one of these states for two years, that you're a resident for two years. Um, and then it's a short, simple form that you fill out and you get granted that tuition um, the tuition remission. So um, the dates are listed here for each of the semesters that you need to apply by. Um, and then there's also a link here and I will put that in the chat as well. Um, if you have any questions about it, you're welcome to reach out to us and we're happy to help. So there's a wide variety of active student um, associations or organizations at ASU. So um, just ASU in general has a lot of different student organizations. So if there's something that you're particularly interested in, um, you will most likely be able to find a student organization around that. Um, but more importantly, we have a lot of uh, student organizations specific to our design disciplines at ASU. So they are paraprofessional, meaning that they are linked to the professional organizations within every discipline, um, but also just some organizations that um, you know are surrounded, just passionate about design and want to make sure that the design future is looking forward and being progressive in a lot of different ways. So. Um, our student organizations do a bunch of different things throughout the, the academic year. A lot of them do fundraisers. Um, recently, the uh, graphic design student organization did a poster show where we all auct they auctioned off different posters and everyone participated, which was really great. Um, so a lot of different things will happen like that um, throughout the academic year. And if um, a lot of great networking opportunities too, there'll be portfolio reviews, um, some events per, uh, at particular design firms um, in the area. So if you are interested, I highly suggest getting involved in one of these student organizations. They're really great. They're led by our faculty and can't say enough good things about what they do. So if you're interested, definitely pursue it. And then we also have internships. So there are required internships in our program. Um, and we throw um, some events surrounding networking opportunities with um, local design firms here as well. So you will, we'll get into the nitty gritty of what those internships really mean for every program if you do end up accepting, which we hope you do, um, to come into the program. And we'll talk specifics about required hours and whatnot. But just so you know, we do set you up for success in the sense of there's internship coordinators in every program. We throw an event called Studio Night, which was really successful. We did our first virtual Studio Night this year, all thanks to Christy. It was very successful. And um, we're, we are looking forward to the in-person event again, just because it's so fun. But um, we will continue to do those sorts of events just to make sure that students are connected with the local community. And um, we just provide that opportunity for you. And all the local design firms really look forward to this event. So it's something that everyone's used to and um, we will continue to participate in. 
So some important dates for events coming up. So we will have an orientation um, that we're still determining a date for for the three plus students. Um, and fall students will um, have orientation on August 18th, uh, the day before, sorry, the Tuesday before classes begin on August 19th. <laughs> we messed up our date here, but. <laughs> Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so August 18th and August 19th is when classes begin. And we'll be in touch more about the three plus orientation and these orientations as well. So you'll get plenty of reminders and Zoom links and have opportunities to ask questions and um, get registered in the in the coming. Yeah, I'll, I'll take responsibility for listing that um, wrong date. But the one thing about the first week of classes is um, the classes will start that Thursday, but that whole week is called fall welcome. So there'll be international student events. There'll be a bunch of different just welcomes and we participate on the, the on Tuesday with the graduate student events. So just make sure Tuesday before the Thursday classes, um, since I didn't write the date right. <laughs> And then contact information. So uh, general questions, we recommend using this design grad at ASU.edu um, email address. This goes to both Corey and I. So if someone's out of the office, sick, um, you will always get your email looked at and generally responded to within a day. Um, and then you also have our individual email addresses as well and our phone numbers. So if you need anything at all, feel free to reach out. Like I said, we're kind of your one-stop shop to ask all of your questions. And then if we need to refer you out, we'll, we'll direct you to the correct department. But generally uh, start with us and we'll get you going in the right direction. And then um, we also recommend if you haven't already, please follow us on Instagram, ASU Design School. Um, this is a great place to keep up to date with events going on, see what's happening in studios, what's going on across the, uh, the school with our students, different projects kind of give you a taste of what's to come. Um, so definitely follow us and, and see what's going on at the school. Well, thank you for attending, first of all. We're very excited that you all decided to join us and learn more about what we do here. Um, there is a lovely lecture happening tomorrow and we welcome you to attend. So um, Christy, if you don't mind putting these links in the chat, I'm sure you're already on it. Um, so the first for the lecture, um, there's an RSVP link that you can um, register and then you'll get the, the Zoom link after. Um, but also Christy works with one of our um, in, interior design faculty to get um, MIA students able to join a studio course today. So if you are interested, it's going to happen from 2.30 to 5.55 and then there is the Zoom link. Um, it's going to be ASU sync so it's going to be a remote studio but you'll be able to get a little bit of insight into what that actually looks like and um, we're excited that th those students get that opportunity. Bill do you have any I see you went on, on mute. Yeah I just wanted to uh, mention so this uh, lecture tomorrow uh, is part of a series uh, but it's a, a particularly interesting lecture in this case because uh, Gustavo who is going to be uh, speaking is uh, a Master of Architecture alum and IMARC uh, 2003 alum from our program. Uh, he and his wife, uh, Lisa um, Beltran, uh, are both actually alums. Uh, Gustavo is originally from Mexico City and, and Materia, the name of the, the, or the architecture practice is based in Mexico City. Uh, Lisa actually came to us from San Juan, Puerto Rico and the, the two met here uh, in graduate school are now married and, and run this practice together. Uh, they're doing some really, really exciting work. And I think uh, it'll be an engaging lecture, not only just to see the work, but also uh, to be able to see uh, successful uh, alum driven practice. Uh, so uh, if you have the time tomorrow, it's, it's definitely worth uh, the carving out time for that lecture. Awesome. And that brings us to the questions part. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen so I can see everyone's questions. All righty. Just looking at the chat first. So Rishi, yes, we are, we're gonna send an information about the three plus orientation. That date has not been set yet, but we will get that information out, okay? Oh, I see Christy actually just answered that too. <laughs> Should have looked down. Okay. Uh, 
And if you have questions, pop them in the Q&A section. I see Phil's answering a few, but let me just look through. So what will be the procedure after accepting the offer like deposits? So deposits are actually not required um, to you know, start the program. So um, we ask you to accept your offer through that Google form that we provide um, in your offer letter email. If you have lost that link, please let us know. We can resend it. We'll, we'll start sending reminders now that the April 15th deadline is is coming up um, with all of the different forms um, for you to accept. And then you'll need to resolve the holds on your account that Christy described earlier and then get registered. Will I be able to concurrently study the MARC and the MIA program? I will be in the MARC three-year program next year. At what point would I begin the MIA program? Julia, that's a really good question. It's really up to uh, the particular student. So you and I can meet about what you envision for yourself. Typically, we recommend that you um, start the MRC program just to see how it's working for you. Um, grad school is definitely different than the undergrad program, but you also are um, you know, able to begin the program right away if that's something that you're interested in. So why don't you and I get together and kind of discuss different scenarios and what you're comfortable with, um, and then we can come up, carve out a plan for you specifically. I see a lot of different concurrent degree conversation um, questions here. Um, it all definitely depends on what concurrent degree program you want to pursue. Um, you know, some can get done in two years and others will have to, you'll have to extend. So that's not something that I can just provide a general statement to. If you are interested in it, please contact us and we can um, go over details about what you're specifically thinking about. Um, but there's a lot of different certificates and concurrent degree programs that students have already really have done. So it's a little bit easier to um, figure all that out if someone has done it in the past. So we can, we can certainly advise you if that's something you're interested in, just let us know. Yeah, I might, I might just add there, um... So there was a question about uh, when to apply. Uh, so typically uh, in, the, in the most expeditious uh, scenario, you might be in a two-year program, say the MR program, and you might have uh, a concurrent degree that's gonna add a year, and then you'll have some shared classes between the two. It's common that you would start your uh, program, let's say in that case, the MR program in the fall, uh, and you would apply sometime around the end of the fall, beginning of the spring, so sometime around November, to be uh, admitted to the concurrent uh, program and then your plan of study in terms of taking courses in the other degree program and then finishing uh, would, would be driven by that admissions decision. Mm -hmm. I would say that if there is a lot of interest, and it seems like there might be, uh, which is great, I think we, we, we want to see a lot of interest in uh, students who are interested in getting two master's degrees in a, in a faster period of time. If there is a lot of interest, uh, we could probably run uh, an inf information session in the fall that would specifically be focused around concurrent degree uh, programs. And we might send out a survey ahead of time asking folks, what degree program are you in? What degree program are you interested in as a concurrent? And look to try to uh, have some answers about what the pathways for those concurrent um, uh, interests might be. So uh, if you're interested, I would say send an email to designgrad at asu.edu. It's not urgent, but probably sometime in the fall uh, after you've been able to kind of complete your matriculation into the program that you've already been admitted to, you can start to apply and we'll look to have an information session maybe in October uh, with the intention being that uh, we can answer any questions that folks might have and make sure that you, you have the information you need to then begin to apply. Yeah, every fall semester we hold a concurrent degree presentation. So we'll we'll survey everyone just to make sure that we have the you know plans of study outlined. But that's something that we already do. So and we can certainly make that happen and answer direct questions about what you might be interested in. Um, I do have one question here that I would like to answer live. So um, anonymous attendee asked, will this still be available for fall? So um, in quotes, out of state and international students who wish to attend classes on campus, but were not able to arrive in time for the first, for the start of classes have given the opportunity to learn through ASU SYNC for the first half of the semester and if necessary, the full semester. 
So that is true. Um, in fall 2020, um, ASU did allow for late arrivals in this um, in the semester, um, and it and it had to make sure that it was in the session B or you had the I-20 dates for session B in order to actually be approved to come in here. Um, I believe that those accommodations will still be made. We're still kind of waiting on what ASU graduate admissions is going to be planning, but um, there have been a lot of different conversations about what is going to be possible, but I am uh, pretty, it's pretty safe to say that I, I believe that we will still be accommodating students in that way as well, because we realize that a lot of the consulates are backed up or not, maybe not even open yet. So that is something that we will will continue to keep everyone updated about. I imagine we'll also hold some um, information sessions over the summer just to make sure that everyone is aware of what ASU is planning. So um, just make sure that you're checking your email. Um, and if you are inter if you are going to attend, please accept because you'll start getting on a mailing list that'll be more catered to specifically coming for the fall semester. So um, make sure that you get those decisions in in order for us to make sure that you're getting the right information too. Thanks, Corey. I, I um, would like to answer Julian's question. There's a question here that says, how is the university life currently on the Tempe campus due to COVID? And would most classes be held physically this fall in 2021? So, uh, Julian, this year, we've certainly seen less uh, students on campus due to the, the uh, pandemic situation. Uh, and we've had a lot of students who've been learning uh, through um, synchronous or live uh, virtual engagement. However, this spring, we're starting to see more and more students coming back. In fact, uh, yesterday, uh, our head of architecture, Mark Nevue, who some of you met with earlier uh, today, uh, and I were out on campus with two of the architecture faculty for a groundbreaking of a design build project that is being built on the Polytechnic campus. And there were probably um, 30 or so students there uh, with us as, along with a number of contractors. And it was a really great outdoor experience, beautiful sunny day to have it. Um, uh, if you go to our Instagram, uh, which uh, was just shared earlier at ASU Design School, you'll see that uh, some of our freshmen are doing a, scratch, uh, a sketch crawl across campus, uh, uh, basically wandering around campus and, and uh, sketching. Uh, those are first year undergrads. Uh, so uh, increasingly we're seeing more and more activity on the campus, but the big question here about fall 2021, which I, I mentioned at the outset is uh, we are being told that the plan will be that everyone is returning to in-person who can be in-person in the fall. Uh, that we should plan to have as many students, you know, back in the traditional classroom uh, as possible uh, for the fall semester. However, uh, as Corey was just mentioning, for students who can't be here in the fall uh, or who have personal safety concerns, we will still be accommodating folks to be able to learn remotely and have the same uh, learning experience and, and achieve the same learning outcomes. Uh, but our plan is that uh, there'll be a, a pretty robust return to uh, campus life in the fall. So I, I hope that answers your question. Uh, so there's a question here about I-20. Uh, uh, this is really something that I, I think we should probably uh, defer. Well, actually, uh, Corey's going to answer this question. Sorry, Corey. I'm, I'm no, no worries. Um, I'm like, I actually know this one. So um, the I-20 because of COVID, there was always physical I-20 forms sent to people's at physical addresses. But a really nice thing that has happened and, you know, um, a positive out of COVID is that now they're electronically sent and that is being accepted. You will receive a tracking number. Um, so every international student's MyASU, if you have not logged into your MyASU, please log in. Um, that is where they'll have all the information about what you need to do in order to submit your I-20, but there also is a tracker. So the tracker will note um, where you are in the process process and then when your I-20 is sent out and that is where you receive the tracking number. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If you have any questions about logging into my ASU, please let us know immediately so we can get you on the right track. Uh, then there's a question here. It says this might be too premature, but do you foresee ASU requiring vaccination in order to attend in person in the fall or will all return regardless and what do class sizes look like? So it, it is a bit uh, premature. Uh, there has not been any discussion, at least not that, that we've been made aware of, about whether or not uh, vaccines will be required for students to return to campus. I, I have a feeling that we'll have more information about that very soon. Um, 
at the moment, I think it's important to note that the state of Arizona, um, our, our governor just announced yesterday that vaccines are now available for uh, all uh, individuals 16 and over at the state vaccine sites uh, starting tomorrow. I think tomorrow is when you can start to register and I don't know how quickly the, the slots for actual vaccinations will happen. Uh, in other words, um, the availability of the vaccine for students, which has been a, a huge question for quite some time, when will students have access to the vaccine, uh, that that will become available tomorrow. I think it's important to note that uh, the uh, infection rates in Arizona are down and, and are currently staying down, uh, which is a really positive sign. We certainly had some moments during the course of the pandemic where um, you know infections were up and, and going up. Uh, but right now things are, are looking quite good. Um, and particularly right now, because the weather's very nice, it's you know possible for folks to meet outside. And, and so there's a lot of, let's say positive momentum at the moment, but we recognize that uh, you know, we don't know what uh, lies ahead. But in short, uh, information around uh, whether or not vaccines will be required will likely be uh, coming from the provost sometime in the next month or so. Uh, we'll communicate that out to folks uh, as soon as we have that information. And um, at the moment, the plan is that everyone will have the ability to return to in-person. But if for whatever reason you don't feel comfortable returning to in-person and or you have some hardship that makes it difficult for you to return in person, we'll be prepared to meet students where they are and to provide uh, an incredible education regardless of how much in-person versus how much remote uh, you, you might need. And then I'm just catching up on the chat side too. Um, Rishi, if you didn't get any information on um, the summer semester from the MID program, please uh, reach out to me. I can connect you with the people that are going to be teaching it so you can get more information on what exactly modality that is. So you can you know, book your flights if you plan on being here and whatnot. So we can get that information to you. And then um, tuition fee deadlines, um, that will come in August. So um, Christy linked to the academic calendar there, which is a really great resource. Look at that to see when you need to register. Um, you know, all different deadlines are gonna be included there, including all the different kinds of vacations that you'll get during the semester too, which are my favorite, so. So I, I think we've answered all of the questions. Thank you all again for uh, joining today. And I just wanna reiterate one more time that we are incredibly excited to hopefully see everyone here in Tempe in the fall. Uh, it's gonna be a, a really exciting year, um, a great time to be a, a graduate student at ASU. So thank you all for your time. Uh, I hope we were able to answer, answer any questions you might have and any uh, future questions that you might have, please don't hesitate to send us an email. Uh, I think the probably the most important thing to note is that Christy and Corey uh, are phenomenal at, if not being able to answer your question directly, being able to help connect you with the right person to get you the answer that you're looking for. We're incredibly fortunate as a school to have such a really uh, strong team supporting our graduate students. You all are going to benefit greatly from getting to know uh, both of them during the course of your time here. Uh, and I, I hope that we will see you all very soon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day, night, evening, wherever you are. Bye. Bye. Bye all.